Hi gang! This is part 3 of making my BB-8 droid, version 2. As you can see, it's working great. Here it is at our local Makerspace North, at a Make 613 event. In part 1, the ball was just a cardboard globe, but that deformed too much, making it need a lot of tape to keep it closed due to all the weight inside. That deforming and duct tape caused it to get stuck in places. In part 2, I've made the ball more rigid by adding three layers of fiberglass to a new cardboard globe, but I didn't get the head back on yet. I've since purchased some much better magnets for keeping the head on. I also did a little more work with the head, adding this upside down cone section, just like you find on the real BB-8. And now it was time to put all that together. I start by cutting a piece of balsa wood to fit in the hole in the head. I follow that with some planning on paper. I'll be using the same roll-on deodorant balls for the casters that I'd used previously. Once I figure out where they can go, I cut holes for them in the balsa wood. I put the rollers in the holes and push the balsa into the head's hole. But when I look at it on the ball, the head is too far away. And if I push the balsa in any further, it just falls all the way in. And so I shape some more pieces of balsa wood and glue them on. Now the balls can stick out less, and the head can be closer to the ball. But I decide to add an extra lip around the circumference anyway, to make sure it doesn't fall in. These are the new magnets I bought off eBay. They seem a little small, but I'll try them. I'll be using these nylon nuts and bolts from Home Depot to attach them. I next plan on paper where the magnets will go, taking into account those inside the ball, too. The plan includes making a bunch of 15 degree angle pieces. I drill a hole through all of them at the same time. Then I cut them out with my scroll saw. And here they all are, though I may not use them all. Here's how they'll go with a magnet and nylon bolt. I then use one of the angle pieces to get the right angle when drilling into the balsa. Finally I bolt the magnets to the head support. And here's the completed head support. You can see that the rollers are keeping the magnets off the ball though that can be adjusted more if needed. With it in the head, I put it on the ball, flip the ball, and use more magnets to hold it in place. It holds on fine so far, and can move around. Next, to make the internal support that goes inside the ball. I start by doing some rough measurements inside the ball to make sure my dimensions are close. I cut a disc using thick plastic from a hobby store. I mark six lines 60 degrees apart. I mark slots for where the bolts for the magnets will go and melt out the slots using an old soldering iron, followed by some trimming. I drill an extra hole in the middle, in case I decide to put magnets there too. I drill three quarter inch holes on the other lines. I need a second disc, and for that I'm reusing the disc I used in my BB-8 version 1. I use the first disc as a template to transfer the quarter inch holes, and drill those too. As with the previous versions of this support system, I attach this wood hub under the piece. I then put the magnets in place. Underneath, the nylon nuts and bolts meet the disc at an angle, but they're flexible and bend to face the disc flat on. A quick test with my fingers shows that my alignment is pretty good for the distance. I try it out with the ball, holding the internal support magnets away from the inside of the ball, but it seems the attraction isn't quite enough. So I add a third set of magnets to the internal support. It seems to stay on better. I then connect the two discs using lightweight quarter-inch nylon bolts from Home Depot. Finally, I can put the internal support on the dry system. Put it in the ball, and close up the ball. But as you can see, the two hemispheres don't meet. The internal support is too high up. So I lower the top piece with the magnets, just as it was designed to be done. This time the hemispheres meet with no problem. But I raise the magnets again, until I can almost close the ball, but not quite. I measure the distance between the support plates. I basically keep adjusting the height of the magnets until the hemispheres close, and I don't think the magnets will rub inside. Notice that the head stays on fairly well. But I decide to use up the last of my magnets and put one at the center of the head support, and the rest on the internal support. The inside poles of the ball have some resin that dripped in while fiberglassing, so I sand that away. I also do a little grinding, since they're a little flat inside, just as they were outside. And just as I did with the previous ball, I spray the inside with an anti-slip coating from a hardware store. While I'm improving things, the last hot glued piece is the hub at the base of the internal support system. I remove it and draw a paper template for the holes, and put it upside down under the drive system, and transfer the hole positions. I drill the holes, insert some bolts, put on the hub, and mount it all in a vise. That way I can hold the nut with the pliers while screwing the bolts on. 
The final assembly is just putting it in the ball, putting on the top hemisphere, taping it up with strips of duct tape, and putting on the head. And once again, here it is in action. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more fun videos like this. If you want to help support these videos, then you can through my Patreon page. Or you can go to my website and donate any amount you want. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!